Hey everybody, it's Marty and Manny here, and we wanted to put this kind of supplemental class together for you guys because we get a lot of questions on these two subjects here: how to estimate rehab costs and then how to determine after repair value. That seems to be where a majority of you guys are getting stuck. Before we go too far, though, I just want to encourage you to look at course one, video three, which is you know how to systematically evaluate a property, and that's in our, our training course website and here on Facebook. And then also video four, which is how to determine what to offer for the property, and that's also in course one. And then finally, course two, video three, which is just a comprehensive video. It's 42 minutes long. Uh, the rehab of the property. So watching those three videos are going to give you a really good solid foundation on how to do these two things. And, uh, we wanted to kind of explain to you kind of really the brainchild behind the the whole mentoring program that we have and that's this what we call our four boxes concept right anywhere yes. yeah we talk about uh, how we break up our business into four boxes acquisition rehab sales and capital and and I'm kind of like the acquisition sales part of our business, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, and then Manny does does the rest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're not. <clears throat> we're basically what we're saying is that mm -hmm. if you wanted to fix and flip homes, these are vital areas that you need to have systems in to be successful at it. Now, if you're doing one to three homes a year, you could potentially take care of each one of these parts of these boxes on your own. But once you start to ramp up or scale up, like Marty and I do it's going to be beneficial to partner up with somebody that can help you out with this because it is a lot of work. So our partnership, um, I call it a perfect marriage because Marty's very analytical. He likes to do research. So naturally, he takes care of the acquisition and the sales part where I take care of the rehab and capital. You know, my strength is in managing people and networking with people and talking with people. So naturally, you know, managing construction crews and then also out there meeting people that can that I can uh, raise capital, those are my strong points. Yeah, and you know you don't want to uh, get too bogged down with with these concepts here. But the point is, you you will probably be operating if you're trying to do this by yourself in all four of these boxes at the same time throughout the duration of the project that you have, and especially like Manny said, if you're doing multiple projects. So uh, I was taught this concept by by a, a very successful fix and flipper here in Phoenix. And he actually had one person in his company assigned to each one of these boxes, almost like a division head. He was the division head of acquisition, and uh, his partner was the division head of, uh, or actually, I, I take that back, he was a division head of raising the money. His partner was the, the, the acquisition guy, and then they had two kind of uh, like directors who ran the rehab and the sales part of their business, and it, and it flowed really well. As a matter of fact, uh, the very last year before he basically retired he'd he'd done 1200 rehabs in five years and, and and it worked very well having this division of labor here with this four boxes concept uh, if it looks familiar to you maybe uh, you can see it's how we built our whole mentoring program with our four courses and 22 videos we actually have four boxes or four courses uh, find and analyze your deal rehab the house uh, sell the house and then course four finding money for your deal so that's that's really how we came up with that uh, that concept for building our video coursework uh, is, is, is in these four. But for the purpose of today's class, we want to just uh, talk specifically on this acquisition box and this acquisition piece and, and these two, how to estimate your rehab costs and then how to determine the ARV or the after repair value because that's where everyone gets hung up, especially like I said, as we were saying before, we're getting a lot of questions in the private group about, you know, figuring out, you know, how much is it going to cost me to do this? You know, who do I call to do it? And then, and then, you know, how much is this house worth? Can you, we're getting constantly getting, you know, emails and calls asking us to help them help you determine what your ARV is on the property. So that's kind of what we're going to jump into here. So when we're doing rehabs, you know, estimating rehab costs, there's, there's three types of rehabs. And within those rehabs, there's there's three phases of the rehab, which we'll go over here in a little detail. So the first type of rehab we have is what we call a basic cosmetic rehab. That's when you're basically doing just basic things to it. You're not reconfiguring anything. You're just painting, you know, changing the flooring, fixtures, landscaping, and appliances. Then the next the next level of the rehab is um, what we call advanced cosmetic rehab. So that's basically 
the above, which is a basic cosmetic rehab. However, now you're adding either, ca you know, you're replacing cabinets, you're replacing countertops, the mechanicals, like, you know, the HVAC, the roof and the windows. So you're kind of getting a little bit more into the projects as opposed to just being basic. And lastly, the third part is what we call, you know, a reconfiguration or addition rehab. That's like the advanced stuff. Uh, you're changing floor plans. Uh, you're adding square footage. Um, you're, you know, adding a bedroom or a bathroom. So that's when you get into the more major things. So there it is. We have like three, three types of rehabs, your basic, your advanced, and then your reconfiguration. Uh, so now I'm going to get into <clears throat> when we're talking about the basic, what that entails. So when we talk about when we when you hear us talk about a basic cosmetic rehab, uh, when you're estimating paint, you know your interior is running you about 85 cents to a dollar per square foot, and on your exterior you're looking at a dollar a dollar 25 per square foot. And when you move into the flooring. Your tile, you can expect to pay anywhere from $3.50 per square foot to $5 per square foot. And carpet will be anywhere from $10 to $12 per square yard. Now, moving along here with still with the basic cosmetic, you know, we're looking at fixtures. So when you're changing, you know, light fixtures, you're looking at $100 per fixture and door hardware, $30 per door. And then you move out to the landscaping, which again, now we're going into sod dollar fifty per square foot if you want to put gravel or rock which is real popular here in Arizona it's thirty dollars per ton and shrubs at thirty dollars per shrub and your appliances we have you know here in Arizona we deal with a basic uh, appliance package which runs your range microwave dishwasher anywhere from twelve hundred to two thousand and refrigerator you can expect to pay a thousand to sixteen hundred uh, so now we move into the cosmetic part like we just discussed the basic one cosmetic You know, we're, we're now we're gonna add you want to replace cabinets. For example, you're looking to pay $250 per box uh, Countertops we'd like to deal with granite. We're looking at paying $35 per square foot and when you're dealing with HVAC It's $3,500 per unit. That's kind of a basic um, standard for us And then uh, roofing you get into the exterior you can expect to pay anywhere from eight thousand to ten thousand dollars for shingle, and when you're replacing windows, you can count on it being about three hundred dollars each. Yeah, it's uh, with the roof. You know, typically, if you're re rehabbing a house with a tile roof, you probably aren't going to have to replace it. Most tile roofs last thirty, forty, fifty years, so we don't really see a lot of houses. We don't really rehab any houses, right? That have yeah, that have yeah. tile roofs that we've ever had to replace. Mm -hmm. The asphalt shingle roof is the one we run into the most. And again, the eight to $10,000 figure is just an estimate. It's gonna be really uh, based on the size of the house. Uh, exactly. you know, uh, we did a 1,100 square foot house uh, in Tempe recently, and I think we paid like $6,600. Yeah. But we've got uh, a big one. You, you've, if you've been watching our videos on our regular Facebook page on 14th Street, I think we paid about $8,000 for Correct. it. It's about a 2,200 square foot house. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to depend on the size of the house, whether they have to tear off existing material or or, or they can shingle over. So mm -hmm. that it's, it's kind of a, again, these are all rough estimates, but we're getting a lot of questions about what we're paying for things. So we thought that this this yeah. this yeah. information would be would be helpful to you. Absolutely. And when you get into the, the big boys, you know, that's when you're reconfiguring and, you know, adding square footage. You can expect to pay anywhere from twenty to forty dollars for a floor plan change. You know, when you're adding a bath, it could be five to seven thousand dollars. A bedroom addition, twenty five hundred to four thousand dollars, and you know the price per square foot, you know, is ninety to a hundred dollars to add to it. Yeah, and and again, like for example, our Fourteenth Street project, we added about eleven hundred and forty five square feet to that house. And we're 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 not quite at ninety dollars a square foot. We're a little under that, but uh, it's hard to put. We don't like to put a a, a general number on an addition uh, and what that's going to cost on a per square foot basis because it's really hard to figure out. Because not only are we doing the addition, we're doing an eleven hundred and forty five square foot addition to the house. We're also remodeling the other one thousand mm -hmm. square feet. So, yeah. so you know, a lot of people ask us, you know, how much does it cost you per square foot to do an addition? Well. 
we don't really separate the two because we're, we're adding square footage, but then we're remodeling the entire property and we're doing landscaping to the entire property. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a tough number to estimate. And um, we're going to try to get better at it and give you mm -hmm. better figures as we move along here and as we learn more. But I think figuring 90 to a hundred dollars square foot, I, I think you're going to be pretty safe there. With yeah. That, I mean, that's right? what, that's what we budgeted for. And if we come in under, then then better for us. Exactly. You know, that, that's where the management comes in of your crews. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You always want to be wrong on mm -hmm. the expensive side, because exactly. <laughs> then if you come in less, you're you're everybody's happy, everybody wins. Yeah. So how to estimate rehab costs? We like to kind of tackle this in in three different little parts, um, because it is overwhelming when you're trying to tackle this project on. So we like to separate them by your interior first, um, then your exterior. And then your mechanicals. The mechanicals are your big ticket items, which include your roof, HVAC, electrical, and plumbing. Yeah, if, if you break these out, if you, when you are seeing a house, a potential project for the very first time, if you just in your head, when you when you pull up into that driveway, you you separate these three things in your mind, it'll be far less overwhelming, and and it'll really be easier to to start assimilating the numbers, putting the numbers in your in your budget together so mm -hmm. let's 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 start with the interior when, when we're talking about yeah. sure so when we when we walk into the interior you know there's these are the things we look for when estimating costs you know you got number one you got your demo uh, number two is your rough carpentry electrical plumbing and insulation three is your cost of windows four is drywall and your finished carpentry is number five uh, number six interior paint seven is flooring cabinets and countertops then you get to finish an electrical plumbing and the last thing number 10 is appliances right and you don't have to do all these things in order but in, in again if you've already watched those those training videos then you you really have seen or have heard this already before but uh, these are just the the items inside the house that you're going to have to address uh, and maybe some you don't have to but mm -hmm. uh, for the most part you're going to have to address uh, hopefully not all 10, but, but seven or eight or nine out of the 10, you're going to have to address, you're going to have to take care of. Uh, so uh, if you think of, if you start thinking of it that way, again, the whole process becomes less, less daunting, right? Exactly. So, yeah, let's talk yeah. about the outside then. And your exterior, <clears throat> you know, demo, paint, landscaping, and garage. Now, you know, a lot of times here in Arizona, for example, landscape pretty much covers, could cover some demo cleanup and however we have demo there because in our milwaukee pro milwaukee properties you know they have a lot of siding over there so sometimes that requires us to rip siding up so that's why we have demo there uh, it looks strange to some people when we have demo on the exterior and also number four the garage uh, the reason that's part of it here again in arizona it's pretty much for the most part all homes have an attached garage well in wisconsin they're detached so you kind of kind of handle that in a separate phase yeah, like uh, a lot of the garages are like their own separate house. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a roof that we have to put on the garage. We have siding we have to do to the garage. Sometimes it, we have a lot of problems with the garage floor, and they're uh, they're all they're cracked and broken apart. So we have mm -hmm. to bust out a garage floor. Sometimes we have to replace the driveway. Uh, so these are all costs that you have to factor into the equation and 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 and, and figure out you know how much money they're going to cost and things you're going to have to to bid out. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that's again why we kind of break that out yeah. yeah and moving along with your mechanicals now you're talking about HVAC you know HVAC is heating ventilation and air conditioning that's a you know these are your big ticket items um, your electrical I mean because there's sometimes you got to replace the electrical especially when you're doing big reconfigurations uh, plumbing uh, foundation and then your roofing part your roof yeah. and these are these are items that that are really difficult for us to, to, to give you numbers on and just mm -hmm. to say this is how much you can expect to pay. Like for HVAC, for example, uh, we, we uh, on our 14th Street project, I budgeted $7,500 for, for HVAC because I, I knew that the house would need two units. And we usually pay about $3,500 a unit. So I said about $7,000 is what I estimated, yeah, right? Yeah, you said 7000 <laughs> However, we what we missed on that was that we actually popped the roof and added a new roof which required new ductwork which we never accounted for the ductwork <laughs> yeah so so, it, so three thousand dollars worth of ductwork that we didn't have in the budget so uh oversight mistake on my part right electrical uh, if you're you know, there's a big difference between just swapping out some outlets you know for example a panel a service panel on a house 
you know, typically will cost you to upgrade. If you have a 60 amp panel and you want to upgrade to 100 or a 200 amp panel, that's usually going to cost you about $2,000, 1500 to $2,000. But if you were wiring a whole house, that's a lot different. Mm -hmm. Same thing with plumbing. And if you're adding a bathroom or, or you're or, or reconfiguring something in a kitchen, moving the kitchen sink from one area to another, those are all costs that, you know, it's really it's really difficult to, for us to tell you what to estimate. That's why you're going to need to bring in an expert and get those things bid out. And, the, and these are specialty trades. Normally, for the most part, the other things, you know, there's, there's dime a dozen. There's people that can do the labor. But when you're talking about HVAC, electric, electricians, plumbers, foundation people, they're experts. You know, so they'll, they'll, these guys, I mean, you could... Ex they're not going to be really cheap, but they're experts in their field, so um, that's why we separate those as well. Yeah, yeah. So, with the, when we're talking about estimating rehab costs, and again, this is some ground that we've already covered in the training videos. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, there's there's really three ways here you can you can figure this out, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you know, number one, starting off gate, you don't you're absolutely green. You know, you pay a licensed general contractor to walk through the house with you. You know, that way you get an idea of of you know using using all those bullet points before what the cost are of all those things are going to be i mean they're a good they're a good resource to have um you know with a square footage and bedroom bathroom count it's possible to do some basic estimating with the figures that we showed you earlier you know and then and, and lastly number three you know find an experienced trustworthy fix and flip investor in your area and ask them what they think you know they're they're those guys are full of resources i mean they might have guys for you to use and you know again it's not it's not a science that marty and i have perfected because in every project that we do we always come across new things they're like yeah. wow like mm -hmm. you know the next time i know now in the future let me look out for this item you know like yeah. remember the septic thing at 14th yeah. street right yeah 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 we had that 14th street house yeah. has been full of learning lessons for mm -hmm. us you know we that house was actually on a a septic it had a septic tank and who would have thought a house in the middle of central phoenix would have a septic tank and that that cost us some time and money it wasn't something we ever encountered before and probably may never mm -hmm. have again now uh if you've been watching on our facebook page or seen in the past the the uh cat pee house the uh the we got the house gutted and we got all the drywall torn out and we got everything cleaned out and we still had this odor yeah. that we couldn't figure it out well the, that red brick fireplace that was in the center of the living room, that, that brick was like a sponge and it absorbed all that smell. So we ended up spending quite a bit of money to, to demo that, to take that out. And then we had additional drywall costs. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that, that are gonna come up. But when I'm doing my estimating, and, and I'll show you here, this is a, the, you know, the spreadsheet, hopefully by now you've, you've downloaded our deal analysis spreadsheet. Uh, through on the Facebook page or on the training course uh, website this is what I use I use this every single day and I start plugging in these numbers okay so that I know or I'm within hopefully five percent of what the actual rehab is going to be that's why we have all this stuff broken down line by line so you can start plugging in these numbers and I, I bring my laptop which looks just like mm -hmm. the pick the laptop in this picture I bring it with me to every single house and I walk through the house with either a general contractor, project manager type, or 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 with a specific trade, and get them to tell me what is your number here, so I can plug it into my spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So I I take this I take my laptop and this spreadsheet with me everywhere I go, and it allows you to, uh, you know, within a really hopefully within pretty accurately get get your number get your numbers plugged in here. But uh, I can take then the square footage of the house based on those basic. Uh, rehab cost numbers we gave you in the beginning of the video here and start figuring out what paint's going to cost, what, what tile's going to cost, uh, what carpet's going to cost. If I've got a win, it's easy to count up how many windows we have so I can figure out how many windows we have and times it by three or four hundred dollars. So mm -hmm. uh, you can get, you can, you can get really accurate or not really accurate, but pretty, pretty close at least, uh, close enough to, to write your offer and then move forward on the purchase yeah. of the property with this information. Mm -hmm. so. And, and the, yeah. more, the more you do, you know, you'll realize that it's just gonna start to become second nature, like just clockwork. You know, you'll yeah. know like, hey, paint, interior, and exterior, based on a square footage, you already know automatically what mm -hmm. the price points are gonna be based on your past experience. Yeah, exactly, You and you wanna use, you know, that very first fix and flip you do, or even the second or third, 
it's not as obviously you want to make money. You want to you we're doing this. We're all in this to make money, mm -hmm. right? But the the point of it here is is that you want to at least you want to go through that experience. And even if you only make a few thousand dollars, or maybe you lose a few thousand. It's gonna it's gonna provide you with the information and the education you need to go out in the next one and do really really well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're excited. We have a, a property coming up here. We're gonna buy uh, in uh, in Central Phoenix, a historic area. Central Phoenix. We got it under contract just now, and we're gonna probably start on it here in the next month or two. But uh, we're gonna do a thousand square foot addition to this house, just like we did on our Central Phoenix uh, project on 14th Street there. And uh, we're going to probably make twice as much money on mm -hmm. it as we will on this on this one we're working on now because we've learned so much. So, yeah. uh, and even if we don't make any money on our 14th Street project, the, what we've gained in knowledge and understanding in the process, uh, we're going to be able to use moving forward to 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 really yeah. do well in these types of uh, larger forced appreciation, advanced cosmetic reconfiguration mm -hmm. rehabs. So. Let's, uh, let's talk about how to determine after repair value. Again, this is something that we get a lot of. Like, yeah. The two biggest things, again, this is the whole purpose of this supplemental class is to really give you even more detail about how all this works and how, how we work our, our way through the process. Uh, in determining after repair value, uh, I do two things. I look at comps inside the subdivision and I look at comps outside the subdivision. Now, to, to a little disclaimer here, if, if there are, when I'm looking at comps and I'm on the MLS, which hopefully by now you've watched all the training videos and you're either in the process of getting your real estate license or finding somebody who has one so you can get MLS access. Otherwise, you won't be able to do any of what I'm going to talk about here in the next couple of minutes. But when I start the process out and I'm looking for comps, I'm always going to start inside the subdivision where the house we're buying is located. Mm -hmm. it, because it, it's a waste of time to go outside the subdivision if there's six, eight, ten comps inside the subdivision that, that I'm looking at because that's what an appraiser is going to do. If there's a lack of comps, maybe there's only one or two or none, well then I'll go outside the mm -hmm. subdivision and look and look for comps. But what I'm going to look for are three things. I'm looking I'm doing a feature analysis first of all. I want to compare apples to apples here with every property and make sure that the features of my house are the same as the ones I'm comping uh, so that we, we, we have a fair price comparison. And then I'm going to do what's called reverse comping and I'll talk about that more in a second. And then I'm going to look at what kind of active listings there are in the subdivision or out of the subdivision that I'm looking at so I know what my competition is because your active listings are your, your competition. With uh, the feature analysis, I'm looking for you know what makes the subject property I'm buying like all the others, and then what makes them different. And specifically by that, what I mean is, does my house have a pool? Do the other houses have pools or not? Does uh, my house have a carport garage? Do the others do not? What's the bedroom bathroom count? Am I looking? Uh, is mine a four two and everybody else is a three two, or maybe mine's a three bedroom two bath and everybody else's are four twos? That certainly has an effect on the value of the property. And then again, uh, if there is my house a single level or a two story, I never ever comp single levels and two stories together. If I have a two story house, if we were, were we having a two story house, I will only look for other two story houses. If it's a single level or a ranch style home. I'm only going to comp those houses that are single level. So hopefully that, mm -hmm. that makes sense uh, because now it's a little different in, in Wisconsin. We can kind of comp ranches and two stories together. There it doesn't seem like people care as much about whether they live in a two story or a one story home, right? But here in Phoenix, it's, that's a big, big deal. So let's talk about reverse comping for a minute. Reverse comping is really looking for the highest comp, the highest close sale in the subdivision because that's the standard we're holding ourselves to, mm -hmm. right? I mean, when we rehab our house, it's going to be the best in the neighborhood. It's going to have the, the, the best features. It's going to be the most modern. It's going to have, it's going to have everything brand new inside it and out so to us we're setting the market we're the market makers in that neighborhood so I always look for the highest closed comp in the subdivision and out of the subdivision if there aren't enough comps in subdivision and say okay 
we're shooting for that number. We want to be the high end sale in that subdivision. And then also it's helpful to look at a price per square foot. And again, you're going to have multiple listing service access to figure this information out. Mm -hmm. Once you know kind of what the price per square foot is, for example, if you have a house that's only 1,500 square feet uh, and the, the high comp is 1,600 square feet or 18, you can use that price per square foot to give yourself an idea of what your house, your 1,400 or 1,500 square foot house is going to sell for. So we want to use an example here, our, 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 <laughs> our cat pee house. Again, if you watch our Facebook, regular Facebook videos, you know all about this property. The cat poop uh, house. Yeah, the cat poop or cat pee house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, these pictures were taken by our wholesaler actually before we ever bought it, and he sent them to us. And you can look at them and see they're pretty nasty, and yet we still went out there to go to go it's see it. Horrible. Yeah, it's bad. Mm. But this, is, uh, this house is uh, 1,430 square feet, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, does have a two-car garage, doesn't have a pool, and it is a single level. Now, all the houses in this subdivision are single level ranch homes, so that kind of makes things easy. Now this is a screenshot of the MLS. Now I typed in, in the MLS, I typed in a, a, a search for homes between, I think it was 1,100 square feet and 1,600 square feet, or maybe it was 2,000 square feet, in this Parca Vista subdivision and if you look there on the right you'll see it does say subdivision Park of Vista Estates there's ample comps in this subdivision okay for us to use so there's no need for me to do an out of comp subdivision search and beginning with the very first property that's pending at 199.9 uh, all the way up to the closed sale at the bottom there for that property in Hartford of 240000 Now, that is a pretty big house, 2,135 square feet. So uh, I don't know how, how much we'll be able to, to uh, factor that comp into our equation. But let's just kind of start out uh, and take a look at where these comps are on the map. So this our subject property is there, the yellow, uh, in the, uh, the, the kind of towards the right of the screen. And then all these other blue marks are where... Uh, the other properties are. So you can see we're all really, really close to where our house is. Now, you'll notice the 51, the freeway there. Uh, our house does not back to the freeway. It's on the opposite side of the street. And even the houses that back to that freeway, there's a, a very large space between the backs of the homes and the freeway. There's a sound wall or, or, or some common area sound wall. So you really, it's really not a factor, I don't think, in the, the value of our property or even the ones that back to the freeway. But the first comp I want to show you here is one that's pending uh, at 3509 East Danbury. That's pending at $235,000. It was only on the market when it went pending 32 days. And, uh, you know, that tells me, or that's a pretty good indicator, they probably got very close to their full price. Most people, when they list their house uh, for a price, don't come down or lower their price or, or are willing to negotiate too much off their asking price in the first 30 days. So you got to feel like it's under contract or pending at 230 to 235. But you can tell from the front of it, it looks a lot like our property on 36. It's got a two car garage. Uh, it's got, uh, looks like from the outside, newer windows, new garage door. It's been painted. Now the, the picture there below that, you'll see the kitchen looks nice. I mean, it's uh, kind of your, your standard uh, investor grade cabinets, appliance package, tile, and, and granite. So, And if you look on the map there to the right, you'll see it's pretty close to our property on 36th Street. It's just a, you know, a few, uh, three or four streets to the south and, mm -hmm. and west. So pretty good comp, right? Pretty good comp, pending comp. Now we've got one here that's closed at 2025 on Libby Street. And if you take a look here at the pictures on the left, You'll see now this is a nice house. It's been done, but it only has a carport, a two-car carport. And if you look at the kitchen photos, you see again nice cabinets, but it's a pretty tiny kitchen, and there's not a lot of cabinets. Mm -hmm. And you've got this small breakfast nook. Uh, so, but a good close comp at 2025. And again, it's if you can see on the map on the right, real close to our property on 36th Street. So, uh, you'll see here that. Uh, the, I've got it highlighted, the, the Danbury comp that we looked at. It's a 3-2, 1,262 square feet. So it's a couple hundred square feet smaller than ours, pending at, two, at 235. Now we have another one here above that. If you look above it, uh, it's 17613 North 36th Street, pending at 
nine. I mean, literally, if we look at the map here, it's right across the street and about three houses mm -hmm. down, pending at 199.9 after just 36 days on the market. But if you look at the house, again, a lot like ours, two car garage, ranch, uh, painted, but on the inside, oof, it's pretty yeah. pretty awful, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a good indicator too, guys, when you're out there doing your comps on the MLS, and Marty's so methodical about it. However, the pictures kind of give you an idea too of what needs to be done or maybe not need to be done. You know, Marty and I have kind of our, our brand, so to speak, when we rehab homes, and sometimes our brand might be overkill in the neighborhood. So if you have a home, like a couple slides back, that at 235, this is what they did to it, then it's pretty fair, you know, safe to say, right, that if you kind of did the same thing, you'll probably end up getting that amount of money. And so you can kind of use that as a blueprint when you're also out there, you know, estimating your, your cost or doing your research. Yeah, you don't want to reinvent the wheel here, guys. I mm -hmm. mean, the thing is, uh, there are lots of investors in the Phoenix market, wherever you may be, if you're in a large market, that are doing this same thing that we're doing. So don't don't be a trailblazer, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, look around at what other people are doing, mm -hmm. mimic it, copy it, maybe make some improvements or changes or add your own little design flair to it, but you don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't, we're not designers, we're not architects. We like to copy what other people are doing. But if you look at this house, you look at the kitchen, <laughs> I mean, oh. Saltillo tile, yellow i mean this is this is a kitchen that was the it hasn't been touched since 1978 i mean it looks like yeah. <laughs> it looks like the brady bunch threw up on this house yeah. right so uh, and if this thing is pending after 36 days on the market at 200 it, it got, it's got to make us feel like uh we're we're doing uh pretty well with our property yes at, at, you know at a higher price point so let me kind of show you what we broke it down here <clears throat> too uh so for our house our cat cat poop house on 36th Street, the highest comp in the subdivision is pending at 235, which is $186 a square foot. Mm -hmm. Lowest comp 2025, so we're really talking about a price per square foot of $141. Uh, so, and there's only one active listing in the uh, in the neighborhood. Let me go back. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't uh, I didn't when I did my research, I only looked at pending and closed listings. Uh, when I did the active uh, listing search. There's only one active listing in the entire subdivision, so there's clearly a lot of pent-up demand in this neighborhood. And we know from our research in Phoenix, anything under $250,000 in Phoenix is red hot. That price point is is red hot. So here's kind of what we came up with uh, with our uh, our breakdown of the uh, the cat uh, poop house. Again, 1,430 <laughs> square feet, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage no pool. We're thinking ARV of about 205 to 210, you know, based on this price per square foot and on the highest uh, comp in the subdivision. Now, since this since we really even put this slide deck together, we've been doing some some homework on this yeah. on this neighborhood and, and and there's there's really a ton of demand. So, we probably push the envelope and mm -hmm. even go up to 225 230 yeah. for a few weeks just to see just to Absolutely. see what happens, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's going to be a really nice property when we're done. Yeah, yeah, this these pictures, man. Every time I look at them, I just uh, <laughs> it's got to be by far the worst smelling home we've ever gotten our mm -hmm. hands on. Yeah. Um, you know, and Marty told me I was actually in, in Mexico on vacation when he told me, "Hey, we picked up this new house," and he referenced it to another home we did at, at the auction years ago, where you know back then we'd have to pretty much break into them to see what we were buying, you know, mm -hmm. from the auction and. And I came out almost throwing up. Uh, it, that's how bad it was. This one here, it was ten times worse. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I cannot go inside of this home without a respirator. That's how bad it was. So when you look at the pictures, it does not do it any justice <laughs> of, as far as what yeah. it smelled like. It's yeah. again, it's 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 our worst, right? Oh, yeah. absolutely, the worst, <laughs> but hands down, hands down. So that's pretty much the end of the class, guys. I uh, hope you found this helpful. And please, if you have questions uh, or you want to respond or interact with us uh, in the private group, you know, make make a comment mm -hmm. in the comment section or, or fire off a question to us. We're here for you. We're in the group every single day, and you're kind of our inspiration for producing these videos. Uh, we we. We, we've been doing this a long time, so a lot of this is kind of second nature to us. So we don't always 
uh, think of or, or remember what it was like when, when yeah. we first got started. So uh, you're our inspiration, guys. So keep the questions coming and uh, keep uh, the interaction going. And we promise we'll be back here every few weeks with uh, a new video or two uh, addressing any questions, comments, or concerns or, or, or things, uh, resources you need. Absolutely. So now go take this information and go flip a house. Yeah, go make it happen, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time.